thank you all very much. I know it's a crowd of uh, people interested in technology because you're up early and you're working hard already. Uh, I, I really appreciate uh, Secretary Garrier, uh, the kind introduction, and it is true. We, first of all, hit it off personally, immediately. I, was, I felt lucky as I was interviewing him. Uh, all I could think to myself is that with his background and his experience, why on earth would he want to give up the high-paying job that he had in the private sector to come work into, in government where I knew he was going to make less? I didn't ask him what he was making in the private sector, but I knew he was doing well. Um, and he, I did sort of imply it, I guess. I didn't exactly ask him why, uh, why he was willing to give it up, but he, I implied the question, I guess, because he launched into how much he cares about this state and how much he wants to make a difference for the people of this state. And, you know, he won me over in about a half a second uh, as he uh, provided that answer to me. And I'm just, I'm truly grateful for everything that he does. He is uh, leading our state in an important mission to use technology to improve the quality of life for all of the residents of Illinois. Before joining my administration, the secretary had an impressive career in the private sector as chief information officer for three Fortune 500 companies. Uh, and he has brought all of that talent to us in state government. He's a tireless advocate for STEM education and a brilliant strategist for transformation of our state's information systems. And I truly do feel lucky to work with him. Uh, I'm really honored to be part of your event, of this year's event, uh, my first and the summit's 20th. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Riley Mortimer and everyone at Government Technology for their commitment to bringing this event to Illinois two full decades. Bringing Illinois' leaders together time and again to grow their knowledge of the IT industry is the best way to set ourselves up for success in today's world. In many ways, Illinois already leads in the digital world. We produce the second largest number of computer science graduates in the entire nation and the fifth most data science graduates. We are home to several of the world's best engineering companies and engineering programs. And over the past five years, thousands of tech startups have been founded on campuses and in towns and cities all across our state at incubators and accelerators like Innovate Springfield, like 1871, Enterprise Works in Champaign, Peoria Innovation Alliance, Quad City Manufacturing Lab, M Hub, Matter, TechNexus, and Blue 1647, and more. We're home to Illinois grown successes like Grubhub and Braintree and CleverSafe. These were unicorns, people called them, because they were started up with almost nothing by founders who are from Illinois and built into billion dollar, multi billion dollar enterprises that serve tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. And we're home to the hubs of some of the top technology companies like Uber and Google and Facebook and Salesforce. And I've said before that an important part of my job is to help our state become one of the most forward-thinking, economically prosperous and innovative in the nation. And we can do that. We are doing that. That includes the secure integration of modern technology into government so that we can serve the residents of Illinois better and more efficiently. I applaud and support the, the hard work of IT leaders across Illinois. Our team inside state government too. Th those in county government, from municipalities, at our colleges and universities, and so many others that work tirelessly for government services to reflect today's digital capabilities. In just the past few months, I've worked to advance critical initiatives for our success in Illinois, and I'm pleased to say that we're making a real difference. Our new capital bill dedicates $420 million to our Connect Illinois broadband initiative that will bring high-speed internet access to every corner of Illinois. 
every county, every city, every resident must have broadband connectivity. In the 21st century, we just can't compete without it. And we're upgrading and improving the Illinois Century Network, which will play an important role in delivering secure, high-speed internet access to all of our public schools and libraries. The technologies we use every day, computers, cell phones, GPS, require data centers to function, not to mention the needs of just about every business in every industry, and yes, our public sector services too. That's why I pushed to create the tax incentives that we now have for data centers in Illinois, building on our state's status as a national hub for data center capacity. In today's world, data centers are critical infrastructure, just like our roads and our trains and our schools. And as we move forward in our technological advancements, it's essential that we prioritize information security every step of the way. My administration is elevating this issue of cybersecurity both within state government and for the public that we serve. That's why I proclaimed October Cyber Awareness Month in Illinois to emphasize the essential nature of digital awareness in today's world. Finally, as we look ahead, I've made it a priority to ensure that we're collaborating across state government in a cross-agency cybersecurity effort. Our Chief Information Security Officer at Do It, Adam Ford, works closely with our Emergency Management Agency. Um, and they work closely with our Illinois National Guard, led by our Master Cyberspace Officer, Brigadier General Richard Neely. This team is dedicated to safeguarding the state's information and services and working with states and counties and municipalities to strengthen the defense of, for all of us of our cyber uh, infrastructure. In closing, I want to applaud all of you for coming here today to enrich and expand your knowledge and passion for technology in service to our residents. I also want to pay special attention to the fact that it's not just you listening to people who stand up on stage that's part of the uh, education process that's going on today. It's you talking to one another, sharing your ideas, your best practices with one another so that we can all advance together. And I want to thank you again, all of you, for your hard work and doing all that you do uh, to advance the interests of the people of the state of Illinois. It's really essential work and I am truly appreciative. Thank you all very much. There's several times in my life I had to follow this man after he spoke and this is one of those. Um, so I'm going to try to keep it as brief as possible, but also double down a lot of the messaging um, that uh, Governor Pritzker shared with us. Again, thank you, Governor, for, for your words. It means a lot when it comes from the top, and it's not just kind of rhetoric. It's about action and kind of hearing from it. So the one thing I want to say um, is, first and foremost, um, I've lived through all the, the roles that actually the governor shared with a couple of tenants, and I've shared this with my staff, and I'll share it with a broader audience. Um, there are five E's, and I'll quickly go through them because they're very important to me, but they capture the moment. Uh, the first E for me is engagement. Our job, we have to engage each other. Um, what the governor spoke to is about that engagement, having that conversation. If something's happening in one county, we can learn from that county in another county. This state is a quilt of different counties and people. We have to connect the dots. And thanks to, to Riley and his team at GovTech, we are able to do that. So engagement is very important. Those of you who have millennial children or young children, um, it's usually an emoji. Um, let's get past the emojis. Let's have conversations. Let's talk to each other and really understand what's going on. The second one is about uh, in, in enablement. Our job is to enable people in our state. Um, one of our groups, the Department of Children and Family Services, won a CIO 100 award in August because they were able to find a way to make an app better so we could serve the children of Illinois. So as opposed to actually taking a handwritten rendering of a child when they're being reviewed by a caseworker, now an image is sent to a physician immediately in real time and we get a real-time response. 
So if that child has to be out of a home that is actually not safe for him or her, um, we could do that. Technology enabled that. So kudos to the DCFS team for making that happen as an example. The third one's exploration. Our job as technologists is look what's next, right? It's very important we understand that. On a drive home um, up in Chicago, I stopped by and there was an ATM that said Bitcoin for sale. And I was a little blown away. Okay, Bitcoins, that's, that's cool. When will the residents of Illinois want starting to pay with Bitcoins? It's not going to be next year. It's not going to be in two years. But in four or five years, will that be a form of payment that they want to do? Are we ready for it? The answer is absolutely not. But should we be thinking about that and moving forward? So exploration is extremely important. But the one thing I'll, I'll just caution us ourselves is exploration on technology does not have to come from technology alone. I'll say that one more time. Exploration from technology could come from our agency peers. It could come from the residents, right? We want to encourage everyone to look at what's next. Exploration is important. The fourth one that I've learned through the years is evangelize value. Technology, it takes an effort to evangelize value. Um, and historically, we go into an office and we talk about all this whiz-bang stuff, .NET versus Oracle. We have these, these debates in front of the business, and they get lost in the words. It's important as leaders, we have to explain technology in a way that they understand it, but don't make it so simple that it's easy to do. They have to understand the value. So our job as leaders in technology is explain the value of technology investments. So for example, if we have old dated systems and equipment, we have to explain the risk profile of that, as opposed to saying, I just need a new server. I need a new server because, finish the statement, and give the business options, A, B, and C. I call it the Goldilocks rule. One of those three is the best solution. Give them options and tell them by not doing this, here is the risk you file. Then we're all in it, all, all uh, eyes wide open. Does that make sense to everyone? We have to evangelize value. And the fifth one is eliminate waste. Our job in technology, there's an opportunity to eliminate waste. If a process takes 10 steps to do and technology can make it five, why don't we force it for five? If it's three, let's make it three. Let's make it easier for people to use things. Uh, my colleague and friend, Erin Guthrie, is the director of DCEO. Uh, she mentioned last year of $80 million in grant money that was available, 50 million was used, 30 million was left on the table because the process was too arduous and hard for small businesses to use it. The technology to get there made it difficult. Let's ease the process. Let's let those individuals find that money and make it easier for them to do so. So the um, final things I'll quickly say is there's also three A's. And again, you can tell I've been in corporate America for a while. Um, the first A is awareness. What we're doing today is building awareness about what we're doing. It's very important that we understand that. We have to know what's going on in different parts of the state. Um, very important. The second one is advocacy. Do we have the advocacy of leadership? We clearly do. Now it's upon us to kind of find a way to move things forward. We have to be very strong advocates. But all that is for nothing if we don't take action. And that's the thing that everyone mentioned to me when I go into government, Ron, prepare yourself. It goes a little slow. Um, it's different. The pace is different. And my challenge to that is, does it have to be? Why can't we just push it, ask the questions, don't break rules. Of course, we understand that. But we should be asking questions. Ask the five whys. Be that kid in the back seat on a long road trip, asking a million questions. Right? Remember your first day on the job, you asked a lot of questions, you were excited. You remember that day? Bring back. Every day should be that first feeling, that first day on the job. Really, really appreciate that. Um, so those are the things I kind of quickly share. I do want to thank several people real quick prior to me leaving the stage. Again, Riley Mortimer, um, thank you very much for your efforts to bring this GovTech thing together. So thank you, Riley. Um, and so knowing Riley, this is for Riley and his team, of course. Thank you for actually the, the hotel staff. I always want to thank the staff. In a past life, that was me. And so I know how challenging that would be. I used to have to do that in Japan a couple times. Very challenging when you don't know the language. Um, so that is a tough thing to do. But more, most importantly, thank you for our supplier community. At the end of the day, we can't do this on our own. While we want to kind of move things forward, there's a lot of great ideas out there, and I don't want to follow the ostrich strategy. Put my head in the dirt and pray it will, I'll figure out somehow. I want to reach out to the supplier community, see what's going on in other states, other solutions, and bring that to bear in our state. There's tremendous value in that. RPA, AI, we have dated antiquated systems, we know that, but we can make those dated and antiquated systems think and perform smarter. And our supplier community can help us do things like that. So again, round of applause for our supplier community. Thank you for coming. So with that, the last thing I want to say is please, please, I've been to a billion conferences. I think many of you have been to a lot of conferences. And there's a sound bite that you walk away with. What did I get out of this conference? What was a waste of my time? It's only as good as what you put into it. So what I ask you to do 
is engage, understand what's happening at the state level, county, municipal level, really engage each other. At the end of the day and the end of tomorrow, we're gonna to make this one of the best conferences and Riley's gonna go tell the other states, I'm a little competitive, that the Illinois Digital Summit was one of the best ever. Good luck to y'all, you'll never be able to keep up with it. Thanks for watching and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.